We've all been there as gamers. Something happens to make you hurl a controller against the nearest wall, and then in a fit of uncontrollable anger, you rip the power cord from the console and declare with supreme confidence that you'll never be back. Fans of WWE can definitely relate to this. I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and these are 10 exact WWE moments that made fans rage quit. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 10. Bret Hart gets screwed. Yes, you can cross Montreal Screwjob off on your What Culture bingo cards. The shocking treatment of Bret Hart at the 1997 Survivor Series is something the Canadians fan base reviled. I wonder why. Seeing Hart struggle to get out of a Shawn Michaels sharpshooter when he realised referee Earl Hebner had called for the bell is still distressing to Brett's biggest supporters. Treating a man who had literally given his blood, sweat and tears to Vince so poorly turned some people off, surprisingly. Thankfully, though, WWE never mentioned it again. Number 9. Jason Jordan is Kurt Angle's Big Secret Fans were teased with the idea that Kurt had a massive secret to share for weeks beforehand. Then, as Angle forced crocodile tears mid-ring, the Raw GM revealed that Jason Jordan, coincidentally someone WWE wanted to push as a single star, was his illegitimate son. Ringside fans smiled, comment sections were confused, but most of us just thought, yeah, but come on, who is it really? Nope, that was it. Jordan was Kurt's big secret, and WWE made no attempt to fully explain why this came out of the blue or why Corey Graves seemed to have the info before Angle. What the f***? Number 8. Jinder Mahal becomes WWE Champion Nobody can begrudge Jinder Mahal for getting an opportunity. He did work hard to change his body via broccoli and did deserve to be booked as something more than enhancement talent but nevertheless fans watching in 2017 were horrified when the lower card mahal shot from outhouse to penthouse and became wwe champion by beating randy orton at backlash it all happened so fast one minute jinder was losing to big Cass on live events and the next he was supposed to be smackdown's new top heel and champion social media reacted accordingly Number 7. A man wins Miss Money in the Bank WWE's history books are unreliable at best. It should always be remembered, though, that the first ever winner of Miss Money in the Bank was James Ellsworth. The chinless one pulled the briefcase down and then threw it to Carmella. WWE then tried to act as though she was the winner because she was the first female to get her grubby mitts on the thing. But that, boys and girls, is bull****. This was a chance to make history. Instead, the women's revolution had a face, and it looked like this. Ugh. Number 6. Triple H gets handed the World Heavyweight title Some fans believe Triple H used power and influence to hold others back during his prime. I can't think why they'd think that. Another case in point happened on Raw in 2002 when Eric Bischoff handed Triple H the new World Heavyweight title. No tournament, no pay-per-view match, no struggle. Nope, there you go, big man. You deserve it. WWE wanted people to boo Triple H for being the chosen one. That much is obvious. What they didn't want is fans seeking solace on good old Paul Heyman's SmackDown instead. Whoops. Then again... It could be worse. Number 5. Triple H molests Katie Vick. September to October 2002 is perhaps one of the most interesting periods in WWE history. There was a gay wedding, some fake lesbians kissing one another, and the infamous saga of Katie Vick. Anyone getting flashbacks, or is that just me? Triple H's allegations that Kane had been a drink-driving weirdo who sexually assaulted a young woman after she died shocked everyone. But that was just the appetizer. Triple H, dressed in a Kane mask, entered a funeral parlor and simulated sex on a mannequin representing Katie Vick's corpse in order to wind up the big red machine. Yeah, that got a few complaints. You see, most people tune into WWE for, oh, I don't know, some f***ing wrestling? Number 4. Sting loses his WrestleMania debut 
When Sting finally became part of the WWE roster, I, along with quite a few others, lost my shit. Imagine all the dream matches, trademark Michael Cole, we were finally going to see. Though Triple H replaced the much-anticipated Undertaker, fans were still willing to invest in the WCW icon's first ever WrestleMania appearance in 2015. And then Triple H clocked the stinger with his trusty sledgehammer and nonsensically pinned him to put a WWE coloured bow on the Monday Night Wars. Sting's first ever match in the company had ended in defeat. And you thought WWE might put aside their superiority complex. Ha! Have you met this guy before? Number 3. John Cena Ends AJ's First Title Run Cena had done an admirable job of making Styles look like the man at SummerSlam just over five months prior to the 2017 Royal Rumble. By beating such an established WWE warhorse cleanly, AJ lived up to his phenomenal billing and cemented his status as a company headliner to trust. We should have known what was coming next. We aren't allowed nice things, you see. AJ was booked to return the favour at the Rumble and watch as his WrestleMania status plummeted from exciting WWE title showdown to opening match fodder with Shane McMahon. Number 2. Roman Reigns is number 30. I was pissed, you were pissed, we were all pissed. But I do have to admit that those YouTube videos of people losing their minds over Roman's number 30 entrance into the 2017 Royal Rumble are hilarious. Look at his little face. In the ultimate display of trolling their own audience, WWE put Roman in last as a surprise entrant. And everyone hoping for Samoa Joe immediately hurled abuse his way. Oh, incidentally, here's an exclusive image of how Vince McMahon reacted backstage. Number 1. Daniel Bryan isn't number 30. Three years before it happened to Roman Reigns, the much more popular Rey Mysterio was treated like an idiot by fans in Pittsburgh at the 2014 event. Batista entered at number 28 and was given a modest pop, but he wasn't the real story. Brian was, and nobody could wait to hear Flight of the Valkyries blare over the PA after that 10 second countdown to number 30. When Booyaka Booyaka played instead, the air was sucked from the building, the live crowd booed incessantly, and for the first and only time, we all thought, F Rey Mysterio. I'm sorry, Rey, I didn't mean it. All I'll say is the WWE Network page crashed that night, and it wasn't from Rave Rumble reviews. Gosh, can you believe that that person said that about that particular video on that entry? I sure can't. <laughs> but you should like, share, and subscribe below anyway. And also, the people who made this video, they're right here. Go follow them and give them some love. Also